Hi, and welcome back to Start a Business. Module 6, Part 2, you're just about there. This unit standard is called Identify the Composition of a Selected New Venture Industry and its Procurement Systems. It's unit standard number 119667. Let's look at networking. So you've started your business. You're out there. It's happening. You need to grow your business, and that's always a tricky part. How do people know that you exist? How do they know what products you sell? So networking is a really good way to get out there and become part of the public and let them know what you have to offer. Bear in mind also that when you're networking, you're also finding out what others have to offer. So don't be afraid to introduce yourself to others, to let them know what line of business you're in. Perhaps carry around business cards that you could share with people so that they don't forget you. Another really good place to go to is professional gatherings. In other words, your industry, it could be the film industry or the printing industry. Attend gatherings there because opportunities exist within those gatherings that you can capitalize on as a business. You never know what somebody's looking for. And if you listen carefully, as we've discussed before, you might hear of an opportunity that you could fulfill. Okay, here's a case study for you. It's called There Are Only Eight Hours in a Day and it's adapted from my first business called Computer Ward. So imagine this, you get to work at 9 in the morning, and between 9 and 5, there's 8 hours for you to make money. You're in the IT industry. Now, the IT industry typically sells hours. So supporting somebody's machines or going to a company, you'd be billing per hour, much like a doctor, really. But there's only 8 hours. An interesting concept. So if your hourly rate were, say, for example, 100 rand an hour, you could only make 800 rand a day. Now, 800 Rand times 20 days in the month is 16,000 Rand. Not too bad, but that's your ceiling. Now, bear in mind, with that ceiling of 16,000 Rand, you're not likely to sell all eight hours in a day. Perhaps you'll sell four, in which case you're only earning 8,000 Rand a month. So, your hourly rate needs to be carefully thought of. But that's just one thing. I'm just warning you against hourly rates. Be careful. Rather look for a product, for a service that you can sell, where time is not the selling point. It's something worth thinking about when you start your business. Let's just look at the concept of selling your products into the marketplace. Now, bear in mind, selling was more about listening than it was anything else. So try to have your customer visualize what they're going to be purchasing. For example, if you were a car salesman, Sir, can you just imagine cruising down the road without any noise factor whatsoever coming through these windscreens or the windows? Or can you just imagine the acceleration from robot to robot? There your consumer or customer is visualizing what they're going to be experiencing. Have a look also at getting your customers to understand that they're getting a bargain. Sir, if you purchase this car today, we can offer you a 15% discount. Can you just imagine? That's a lot of saving. Also remember who your target audience is, who are you talking to, what motivates them, what makes them tick. It's important to know this because then you can bring up the positive points about your product or service that may satisfy their needs. Let your customers also know how they can get your product. Sir, we have a car waiting for you at our North End branch, or this could arrive with you in the post within three to four days only, or you can have the product right now as you walk out the store. It's always worth looking at the guarantee that you offer your product or your service. A guarantee helps your customer feel comfortable and secure that the product they're purchasing is not just a quick and easy. That if there were a problem with the product, they could bring it back to you and you would look at it, fix it or replace it. Offering a guarantee helps your customer feel secure in the purchase they're making. Have you noticed these days we've got these loyalty programs? If you go to some supermarkets, they say, have you got our loyalty card? Consider offering a loyalty card or some sort of loyalty service. Discount if you purchase X amount per month. This is a way to attract and retain your customers. Another way to look at making a sale is to offer it as a one-time offer. In other words, it doesn't last beyond now. Help your customer make the decision today. Not let them think or wait a week or so, but to make the decision today. Something worth bearing in mind is that at each stage of the product, you want to add value. For example, if you were to purchase raw materials and they came into your factory, maybe it's raw steel for that matter, and you bent it and twisted it into gates, 
you're adding value to that raw steel. From a further point of view, if you were to sell it to a wholesaler, he might paint it and add value to it there as well. So adding value to products is almost like differentiating them from the competitors. You're able to add value knowing what the customer wants along the way and thus satisfying the customer's needs. So let's just take a quick look at the value chain then. You've got inbound logistics, which is raw materials to the factory. You've got operations where you twisted the metal and made it into a gate, for example. And you've got outbound logistics, which is the finished goods getting to the consumer. It includes marketing and sales, finance, or credit, etc. Those are the operational sides of the logistics. An interesting concept in business is always the factor of whether advertising a product and the cost of advertising increases the value or decreases the value of the product. Just think of this for example. We sell widgets, or let's take those metal gates for example. If we were to put an advert in the newspaper, that may cost us 2,000 Rand. We'd have to add the 2,000 Rand cost of the advert to the product in order to lift the price up, so the product would become more expensive. If we didn't advertise, what would happen then? We may never sell the product. So advertising helps us let the public know our product exists. Without advertising, they wouldn't know. And bear in mind, the more the advertising does and goes out there, the more the public demand of the product. The more product we sell or make, the less the cost, if you remember about productivity. So the less the cost of the product being produced, the less it has to sell for and therefore the advertising cost is becoming less and less. So in a nutshell, you can argue whether advertising adds to the cost of the product or whether advertising reduces it. So from a marketing point of view, we realize therefore that advertising actually reduces the cost of the product. It reduces it because it attracts more customers. In attracting more customers means more demand on our product, means we can produce for less. And therefore, by producing for less, our product enters the marketplace at a reduced cost. So bear that in mind, advertising pays. Something else to bear in mind also in sales. We pitch a customer. What does pitching really mean? It means that a salesman understands his product well enough that all the benefits and the possible pitfalls of that product are known by the salesman. So the salesman would pitch his customer, telling the customer about the benefits, of course, he's listened to the customer carefully as well, understanding where the customer is coming from, so that he can bend those benefits towards the customer's needs. But pitching a customer is about discussing the benefits and also possibly the pitfalls of his product to the customer in the hope that he'll make a sale. So when you pitch your customer, make sure you know the benefits of your product and also its pitfalls and possibly even your competitor's products. Know also that you should be prepared and be confident about what you're saying. Be confident in the product you're selling or the service. Lastly, you may be prepared also with counter objections. No, I don't need that product. The color's wrong. Have the answers to those questions. Be prepared as a salesperson when you're pitching a customer that you can counteract negativity with the positive benefits your product or service has to offer. A last point on selling is this. Bear in mind that selling is a numbers game. You'll talk to 10 people and one person will buy from you. Or you'll have 100 customers come through your shop and only 10 will purchase something. Selling is about numbers. You have to attract the numbers into your selling net in order to be able to make sales. Here's a couple of tips you might consider regarding advertising your business. Focus on your target market and Look for free advertising or specials. There might be specials in the newspaper, free advertising that you can use. Print flyers and business cards that you can give away to people. Buy one, get one free specials, where you can purchase one ream of paper and get another ream for free. Look out for these cost savers. You can place advertising in trade magazines to attract attention. Share your costs with others. In other words, advertise with another company. Let's both take that advertising space and split it into two, for example. Give a talk or a seminar in order to let people know about your products or services. Put ads on bulletin boards outside, by the vet or at the doctor's offices or at schools. And discount to a friend. In other words, bring a friend to me and I'll give you 50% of what you purchase. 
These are ways that we can increase the sales and advertise our products. And remember, nothing starts without a sale. No producing, no manufacturing, nothing. So a salesperson in your organization is a key person. Pay them well and let them generate the sales which generate the profits of your company. You're going to want to look at funding as well for your business and there are a couple of stages in funding here. Let's have a look at them up here as well. Stage one businesses, they're startups. They're going to need funding right from the very beginning. They're going to need funding for cash flow to keep the business running for the first few months, machinery, equipment. Stage two type businesses are businesses that have plans and products and samples. They're already halfway there, but they need the finance to get going. Stage three businesses have full business plans and their pilot programs are in place. In other words, they've created a, a sample or, or something that works and the banks are prepared to back them for that. And a stage four business has been in operation for some time and that business is looking to expand its business. So look at what stage your business might be in or your plans for your business. And that way you can pitch towards a bank in that manner. Just understand also that when you're borrowing money from the bank, yes, you're going to have to pay it back. And yes, you're going to have to pay interest. And yes, you should think about paying them back first before you draw any dividends out that business or any extras out the business. Also bear in mind that you're likely to want to have a short term loan, which is generally less than five years and loans which are beyond five years. Each bank will be different, but dealing with them and understanding a short term loan is less than five years and a long term loan is greater than five years will help you to understand the type of loan you're going to need from a financial institution. Also bear in mind when you're building your business, you might consider a joint venture. But why a joint venture, you ask? Well, your company or you could offer certain faculties towards the joint venture and another party could offer another side of the equation. So you could do, for example, the sales and somebody else could do the admin. And a joint venture is a really good way to grow your business without having to have partners or without having to have anybody else enter your PTY Limited. With a joint venture, make sure that you've got something specific to offer the joint venture and that the other party also has something specific to offer. That way you'll be tidying up inside the marketplace. So the two parties to the joint venture would be able to offer something specific and thereby capitalize in the marketplace and increase profitability for the two parties. Let's just talk briefly about procurement or supply chain. Procurement is about getting the right product to your offices or to your building at the right price. Now, when you buy something from a supplier, you normally would have to pay cash or COD, cash on delivery. You'd expect to do this in the beginning of your business because you don't have a track record. However, if your track record grows over time, you may be able to get 30 days or 60 days. In other words, pay your statement or what you purchased within the last 30 days, 30 days later. And this is quite a benefit to your cash flow. But bear in mind, you still have to pay back suppliers. They become like a mini bank to you. So procurement refers to stock and you need to be careful about how much stock you hold because the cost of holding stock also has a bearing. Money in stock could be money in the bank and money in the bank earns interest. So stock that's sitting around in your warehouse or your store and not earning any interest is actually costing you money. It's costing you the interest you would have earned in the bank. So bear in mind how much stock you keep in your store. Also, the more stock that you have in your store, the more likely you're going to have pilferage or lossage or shrinkage or people stealing it. So just bear in mind, carrying stock or too much stock can be a big cost to your business.